<clears throat> I have a dream. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing. Okay, let me start again. <clears throat> I have a dream. A dream that one day new media rights can answer the question once and for all. Are historical speeches in the public domain? Well, actually, that's just what this video is for. In this video, yes, in this very video, we'll be talking about which speeches are public domain and which speeches are not. As usual, the answer isn't cut and dry. It never is. So bear with me. As you might remember, creative works that are no longer protected by copyright are called public domain works. If a work is public domain, that means you are free to use them in your movies, books, blogs, whatever. Speeches are considered copyrighted works when they are recorded, written down, or videotaped. Until then, a speech is just, well, somebody speaking. Speech isn't protected by copyright until it is fixed in a tangible medium. But, I assume you want to reuse a speech in your work, and the speech was written down or recorded in some way. Unless you have an amazing memory and just know the Gettysburg Address off the top of your head. But if it's recorded in some way, that means it's protected by copyright. Okay, so easy stuff first. Any speech before 1923 is going to be in the public domain. And any speech made by someone working for the federal government will be in the public domain. Of course, it's always best to look this information up and confirm it before you use a work. But you're in pretty safe territory here. What about other works? If the work was published between 1923 and 1963 and was not re-registered with the Copyright Office, then it is also in the public domain. You may be able to find out if the speech that you want to use met these requirements through a little Googling. So what happened after 1977? Between 1978 and 1989, authors got a second chance to put a copyright notice on, but they only had five years to register the speech. However, this became an issue for people giving speeches. Often, they delivered the speeches to wide audiences before registering the work, and reporters would simply reprint their speeches freely. For example, Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech became involved in a famous lawsuit where King's estate wanted to keep the work out of the public domain. It involved complicated issues such as whether the speech was under a general publication or a limited publication, and if you're really interested in the details of that case, don't worry, there's a link below. Moving on, you're probably wondering what happened after 1989. Well, the U.S. finally caught up with the rest of the world, and now we don't require registration or copyright notice. So everything is given copyright protection as soon as a physical copy is made, whether you wrote it down by hand, videotaped it, or made a sound recording of it. Anyway, you're probably thinking, enough of this legal mumbo-jumbo. What does it mean for me? Well, it means you gotta ask permission from Martin Luther King Jr.'s estate to use his I Have a Dream speech under current laws until 2038. On the bright side, other famous speeches like John Winthrop's City Upon a Hill, that speech can be incorporated freely in anyone's artistic work because it came out in 1630. For example, if you'd like to copy the entire I Have a Dream speech to your blog, you'd need to ask permission. This is not the case if you'd like to reference a line or a small portion of the speech. To be safe, always check the date of the work you're looking for. You know, like when you're about to drink milk, you always check the expiration date on the carton just to be safe. The Copyright Office provides a helpful service online for identifying the copyright owner of any work made after 1977. But for works between 1870 and 1977, you have to look it up in their card catalog. You can either do the search in person or at the Library of Congress, or if you can't make it in person, you can pay one of the Copyright Office's librarians an hourly rate to do the research for you. To figure out how to do that, we've included a link below. Of course, there are some speeches that entered the public domain as soon as they were given. These were dedicated by the speech givers themselves to the public domain. Creative Commons, another great nonprofit group, offers an easy process for people to dedicate their creative works to the public domain. Wow, this was a long video. It could be a speech itself. But now, I have another dream. That one day, you'll donate some money to New Media Rights so we can keep doing these videos. My dream involves you donating at our YouTube channel or at newmediarights.org. 
And special thanks to Wikipedia, the U.S. Copyright Office, Creative Commons, and the Electronic Frontier Foundation for providing some great Creative Commons resources we base this video on. See you next time. That was a half-hearted see you next time. Well, I was out of breath. That was a long...